fan. What up guys, uh, you know it's serious. You know this is super serial vlog when uh, I'm this close to you. I wanna get close, I wanna get personal. I wanna be with you. What are you doing? What's up guys, welcome back to a brand new vlog. Welcome back to a brand new video. Man, this video is gonna be a little more serious. Um, if you guys haven't heard, there was a sailor that was uh, pronounced overboard. He was pronounced dead. Um, it had been five days and he reappeared on the ship. My uniform looks like hammer dog shit. My boots are done and scuffed, but I'm all right with it. My haircut is on set, and I haven't shaved in days. He had reappeared on the ship five to six days after he was pronounced overboard. How does this happen? What does this mean for the sailor? What does this mean for that ship? What does this mean for, you know, the Navy in general? I want to talk about this. I want to talk about this situation, uh, man overboard, um, and also people, you know, being depressed, living at sea, on the ship. You know, my time, um, almost two years that I spent on the carrier, on two different carriers, living out at sea, I encountered a lot of people that were depressed. Um, even myself, this isn't something that I talk about. This isn't something that, you know, the whole really personal stuff in the Navy, in the military, s talking about stuff like this has a very negative mantra around it still you know it's getting a lot better it's getting a lot a lot better but still you know if you go to mental health if you say that you need help you're kind of perceived as weak you're kind of um worried that that's going to affect your career and it's very unfortunate before we get into all this i found a clip on my old laptop of me in my work center on the carrier sitting around during a man overboard drill the very scary thing about this situation too this video that i'm about to show you we all knew this person we all knew this person that we thought went overboard. Like I said, he was in his rack sleeping the whole freaking time. They found him a couple hours later. But uh, this is the footage, we're gonna watch it right now. So first with this USS Shiloh sailor, um, they said they found him in an engineering compartment. He was hiding out in there for six days. Now obviously they flew him right off the ship immediately. He's probably getting a mental evaluation. Um, they're keeping things kind of under wraps. He's obviously going to go to captain's mast. He's very high chance he's going to be getting kicked out. But like I said, living out at sea, it can cause a very severe feeling of isolation. Very, very severe feeling of isolation, and that can be very scary. Now, I don't want to make assumptions. I don't know why this sailor was hiding out for five, six days, why he didn't come back out. I don't know who was feeding him, where he was going to the bathroom. I don't know how they didn't even find him. I can understand if he was on a carrier, and you can't find him on the carrier for six days. 5,000 people. You know, I'm sure he could have found a little compartment, a little fan room that you have to crawl to get into. There are spaces like that on the ship where you have to crawl, army crawl, to get into this fan room and then you can stand up in it and there's like a little room for you to stand up and move around. It's freaking bizarre. The work center that I worked in on my first carrier, the plane captain branch, the plane captain division for my squadron, our shop was literally right under the flight deck, right by the catwalk, you know, so we can go out our shop and get up on the flight deck in two seconds, just like that if we had to. The guys working next to us, the gear dogs, the ABEs, some of the hardest working mother truckers I've ever seen. You know, the gear dogs are intense. I guess one of their shipmates, one of the gear dogs went a little, you know, he went a little crazy. And uh, he strapped about 15 aircraft chains around him. Tried to jump off the catwalk. Um, he was tackled before he can jump off. A lot of the accidents, a lot of the deaths you see of people falling off the ship, it's intentional. You know, there is countless, countless of safety procedures that keep you safe on the ship. Even when you're working on the flight deck, you wear a float coat that has um, all these freaking little duttbees and things in there in case you fall off. The most important thing, it has a little beacon. If this float coat hits the water, the salt water is going to activate the beacon. The beacon is going to go off up on the bridge and it's going to let man overboard, man overboard, starboard side. It's very rare nowadays that you see people getting blown off the flight deck by jet exhaust or tripping or something like that. You know, most of it's intentional. So back to talking about mental health, back to talking about living on a ship for months and months on end. It's, uh, it's, an, alien, it's an alien way of life. It's completely different. 
you know, than anything you'll ever experience. Especially living on a freaking military war vessel for that long. You know, you're going to be under countless hours of work. Um, you're going to be grinding day in and day out, 12 to 16 hour days, every single day, seven days a week. So that, so that can take a toll on some people, you know, but you guys have to know what you're signing up for. You have to know what you're getting into. You have to have that mental toughness, you know, to see it through. The biggest piece of advice that I think I can give to you guys is just don't isolate yourself. You know, do not isolate yourself. Try to surround yourself with like-minded people, with positive people. Do MWR events, you know, get out. If you have to, talk to the chaplain. You know, talk to one of the RPs. You don't have to go to medical. You don't have to go to them right away. And you know, if you're worried about ruining your career, which is something that's unfortunate that people have to think about. But um, you know, talk to somebody. Just don't isolate yourself. Don't be like the USS Shiloh sailor. I'm gonna tell you the truth, man. Some work centers, some work environments on the ship, whatever your radar, some leadership is gonna be very toxic. It's gonna be a very toxic leadership, very toxic chain of command. And uh, you know, don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. Don't be afraid to go get help. Don't be afraid if you have to, you know, don't be a blue falcon and go straight up to the CEO, you know, and jump your chain of command if you have a problem. Try to handle it at the lowest level possible. If you did everything you can and things aren't getting better, like I said, don't be afraid to reach out for help. And it's very sad and it's something that we need to get better at addressing. We need to get better at talking about. <clears throat> My boy Papa right here. We'll see you guys tomorrow. New videos every day. Brand new vlog coming out tomorrow. See you tomorrow from me and my boy Papa. Dude, your breath smell.